You have been taught and you have heard the saying that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And in Hebrew, Bereshit bara Elohim et ha shamaim vayet ha eretz. And you think uh, this is how it all began. In the Quran, they also speak of bid ul al kalk, which also means in the beginning. The account in the Quran is similar to the one found in Genesis, where God creates all things. Do you know that this could be full of lies? Do you know that in the beginning may be a lie? That there was no beginning at all? How could this be? Subscribe to our channel, follow our YouTube video, join our university, and let us celebrate many of the festivals together. Imagine a scenario where you have a toy made of building blocks. First, you take the toy apart to see what smaller pieces it's made of, like the blocks. Then you continue to break the blocks into even tinier pieces again and again. What happens? Scientists have done the same thing with matter and material things. From the atoms using accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider, they found more smaller items and more smaller particles, subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. But scientists didn't stop there. They continue to go deeper and they continue to dig, to split, and to accelerate these particles. Then from atoms, they realize that atoms are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. They split the protons, neutrons, and they found that they have got smaller particles known as quarks they split the quarks and they realize that the quarks are held together by other particles called the gluons which mediate the strong force and scientists didn't stop there they continue to split up to the hadrons and bosons and fermions and they didn't stop there they continued kept on splitting splitting particles into smaller and smaller levels and guess what after many steps of splitting, they suddenly discovered nothing. Everything vanished. And if it was not for quantum science, they would not have known because the paradigms of science itself at that point was totally limited and its instruments totally limited. But quantum science was able to discover this shimmering, almost nothing like massless waves that appeared spontaneously and vanished at the same time therefore this nothing isn't empty though it is full of potential a quantum field from which particles emerge therefore they discovered and proved the existence of the waters of Nunu. this is important because the idea that the universe had a definitive beginning as is central to the abrahamic religions with their genesis chapter where they say in the beginning god created is relatively a modern notion introduced to limit the ability of human consciousness within finite prison walls. This concept is starkly different from much, much older and more ancient civilization narratives and the perception of time and creation, particularly our own, the ancient African concept. Our worldview, our ancient ancestors' worldview, embraced the universe which had no clear beginning, as exemplified in the concept of Zepitepi, the first time or the first moments. Then, that time, they said the gods had generated themselves and the gods intervened in this cosmic order, which was silent. In our book, A Free From God, we deal with this in a very thorough manner. Even this one popular ancient African cosmological explanation this concept of Zeptepi referring only to a primordial moment when time and space first emerged, this first time did not mark a creation from nothingness. Instead, it was the moment when order, Ma'at, emerged from chaos. Before Zeptepi, there existed this chaos, which we know as the Nyunyu, an infinite and chaotic ocean, often described as the waters of Nyunyu. Same as the quantum field alluded to already, Nyunyu was not matter, no energy, no spirit. It is pure 
potential without any form, time, or space. Our ancestors, actually in the pyramid text, wrote, Out of the waters of Nyunyu, I rise, the primal chaos, unbounded and unlimitless, from which all that is comes forth. When they wrote this passage, they realized that it captured the reality, these waters of Nyunyu. It is important for us to understand that when he says, I am he who came into being in the form of Kepiri, it means transformation, it means change. I came into being a through a being and nothing existed before me. It's also found in the coffin text, spell 1130. These waters of Nyunyu were and are not bound by the physical or spiritual laws of reality as we understand them today. Instead, they are timeless, massless waves of potential, a concept which intriguingly resonates with the modern ideas in quantum physics about the quantum field, a sea of energy from which particles and the matter spontaneously arise. Creation is an emergency, not a beginning, as you may think. In ancient African thought, creation was not a linear event that started at a fixed point. Rather, it is a ongoing cyclical process. The gods emerge from the waters of Nyunyu, and through their interaction, the universe began to take shape. This emergence of form from formlessness is a process, not a singular moment, implying an eternal cyclical understanding of events. This passage doesn't mean that there was a beginning at all. Our ancient ancestors view uh, bears a surprising resemblance to quantum mechanics, as we have already said, and the quantum field, a field of infinite potential, which is often described as the foundation of reality. Particles pop in and pop out of existence, governed by probabilities rather than certainties. Similar, the waters of Nyunyu in African mythology represent a mass, massless sea of potential where the possibility of creation are boundless. Heisenberg uncertainty principle. When Heisenberg said, one cannot simultaneously determine both the position and momentum of an electron. This is exactly what, uh, what is happening with the particles in the waters of Nyunyu. Quantum example. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle implies that within a vacuum, particles can appear and disappear spontaneously. Thus, it resonates with the idea that the Nyunyu holds all possibilities and the forms energy from its depth. The African concept of time is cyclical, not linear. The universe and the existence itself are seen as continual cycles of creation, destruction, and the rebirth. This cyclical nature has no beginning and has no end. It is the duat. It is symbolized by us as we celebrate the new year, as we celebrate day and night, as we celebrate seasons. In the book of Coming Forth by Day, we read, I am the one who closes and the one who opens and who created in himself all things, the Lord of eternity whose form is infinite and unchanging. This echoes modern philosophical principles that we know today. The true nature of the universe. Some quantum theorists and physicists propose that the universe may not have a beginning in the traditional sense, but rather may exist in an eternal state of fluctuation, similar to the new new, where everything arises from nothing but infinite potential. Number five, the creation beyond. In African cosmology, the creator is not confined to any form and exists beyond energy being, spirit, or physical matter as conditioned today by others who think that the creator is something. The Nyunyu and the later primeval creator, the gods like Atema, Amunu, so-called Amen, are forces of consciousness and potential that transcend what humans perceive as reality. This aligns with the idea that the ultimate source is neither energy nor being. And it is beyond duality and the forms that humans can conceptualize. What can you do around all this information? This African cosmology presents a view of creation 
That challenge is the linear, finite, and definitive beginning posited by later Abrahamic traditions. African sages teach that there never was a beginning, only the emergence of order from the potentiality of Nyunyu. This narrative resonates with the quantum field theory of today, suggesting a universe that arises not from nothing, but from a massless sea of possibilities. The real creator, as described in our ancient texts, is beyond form, beyond spirit, or energy, is unknowable, pure consciousness, the source of all potential beyond time and space. Therefore, what you can do is to know thyself, to know that the kingdom of heaven is within thee, this source of all this potential, and the author of all this potential unknowable is the source of our divine spark, which is beyond so-called the beginning. But our ancestors taught all the possibilities and taught us that the gods who depart from mankind a grievous thing and only evil angels who remain who will mingle with men and drive the poor wretches by force, by main force into all manner of reckless crime, into wars and robberies and frauds and all things hostile to the nature of the soul. Emphasis ours. Now, when you go to the Emerald Tablets, especially if you read Emerald Tablet 6, The Key of Magic, we read the following. Concerning these evil angels, that they banded together in a, an order or a society or a secret society, brothers of darkness, they throughout the ages, antagonists, they to the children of men, walked they always secret and hidden, found yet not found by the children of men. Forever they walked and worked in darkness, hiding from the light. In the darkness of night, silently, secretly, used they their power, enslaving and binding the souls of men, your divine spark. Unseen they come, and unseen they go. And the man, in his ignorance, calls them from below. You might be praying to one of these band of darkness, or band of ignorance, or evil, or evil angels. What can you do? There are three things that you can do. One, surrender not your soul to the brothers of darkness or evil angels. Keep thy face ever turned toward the light, the truth. Number two, listen, O man, to he who comes to you, the preacher, or anybody teaching you knowledge, weigh in the balance if his words be of light. For many, they are who walk in dark brightness, pretenders, deceivers. And yet are not the children of light. Easy it is to follow their pathway. Easy to follow the path that they lead. So these pastors, these teachers that you think of might be members of the dark forces. When, or evil forces, when unto thee there comes a feeling or a thought drawing thee nearer to the dark gate, what do you do? Number three, send through thy body a wave of vibration, irregular first and the regular second, repeating time after time until free. Start the wave force in thy brain center. Direct it in waves from thine head to thy foot. This wave is your quantum power. You are creating quantum power because you have got the waters of room, the quantum field with you. Therefore, this section that says in the beginning God created the heavens indicates a world held captive, a universe held captive, a brain held captive, a mind held captive. Thus, it is clear that the billions may have been programmed by the teaching that in the beginning God, a Yahweh, a deity, created the universe. Yet we know that this deity Yahweh is El, is a deity predated by the waters of Nunu in uncountable eons. There was no beginning at all. You must remember and you must fight to rediscover what you used to know. What we are saying here is already in your heart, it's already in your soul, it's already in your divine spark. You know the truth. You only need to rediscover it. But if you want to practice and if you have followed the teaching that in the beginning God created the heavens, it is time to reconsider that. Remember the Emerald Tablets is warning. These people that come and teach even including yours truly, how manager to be priest rabbi, investigate, prove, go deeper. Don't just believe. 
You can join our Bantu University in this journey and create a unique future by studying Bantu foundations and Bantu mysteries. Thank you. Remember, there was no beginning at all. Everything is in fluctuation. But entropy might trap and destroy you if you do not wake up. Subscribe to our channel, Hamid Iburu Ethics. Let us walk this journey together and let us know that indeed we are awake. Tatenda, siabonga, tualumba, asante sana, taalu, have a great day.